Hey everybody, just doing a quick update. Um, I'm in the Alternative Heresy Lounge, um, like I mentioned, until next spring when I'm back in my house. Um, so yeah, a little, little disorganized here, although my painting room can be just as disorganized, so <laughs> I guess I can't insult it too much. Um, I uh, just want to do a little bit of an update. I just have a couple of minutes just to show that I finished painting, and um, I wanted to show a little bit of a purchase that I made too. Um, the, uh, you guys may have saw my last video where I ended up, um, painting, uh, or getting out some World War II stuff. And, um, interesting thing is I saw Rusty was doing some World War II stuff. And, um, I know Dan Boomin also, he's quite into the bolt action stuff. And I kind of, um, got inspired a little bit thinking about, I guess, um, shortly after I started this channel, like, and it's 11 or 12 years now, I'm not, so we're not at the 10 year mark, but I, around 10 years ago, got into Bolt Action as my first game outside of Warhammer 40k. It's the game that got me into historicals, and I think, I never really knew why I stopped it, and I, and I don't know if many of you have games like that where you play it, and maybe your gaming group moves on, or, you know, maybe you're, you see something that you really like, and chase after it after you've been playing it and you and you leave it and then you ask yourself why did i ever stop playing um bolt action is like that for me i, I really always enjoyed bolt action um i know that my favorite period being french indian war i probably went after musket and tomahawks and never looked back and that's probably why i left it in the dust but i really there's an aspect to uh horse and musket for those of you that are in historical that they don't, it doesn't really replace the armor and some of the aspects of a more modern warfare game. And, um, and so I kind of have started to miss it. And I guess because I'm on a bit of a hobby resurgence where I've had, a, I would almost say a couple of years after my 10 year mark of being back in the hobby, I had almost a couple of years of, of sort of in a funk, like, you know, and, and now I really do feel like I've come back um, in, in the last couple of months, I've really had an interest and a zeal, you know, to get to be painting miniatures again, and and um, I've been wargaming more than painting. It's been more of a painting funk, but to me, if I'm not into painting, even even though I always enjoy a game, if I'm not into painting, then um, that's hard to sustain, you know, like because that's really what it's mostly about for me. Is like I'm, I'm a painter first, and then a gamer second. Um, and so, um, getting back to what I was talking about, I've been almost like going back to my roots a bit and um, painting a little bit of Warhammer 40k like stuff that I have um, bolt action only thing is is I'm not dropping the fantasy the Warhammer fantasy I just really love that and I don't see myself stopping that but I am mixing in some historicals right now again and because I was like oh I'm just gonna paint this and we're gonna do a painting challenge it got me thinking and now I'm already there. I was actually painting at my hobby store last weekend and they had a bolt action demo going on. So they had a number of tables set up and it just all sort of started clicking for me. Like, you know, I'm going to be painting it. I'm kind of now interested in it. And so I went out, I went out, I had this delivered. <laughs> and so I got the second edition, um, just as impressive. I haven't read through it at all, but just as impressive of a publication. I know it's been out a long time, second edition, but I had only the first edition. I never played second edition. But the one thing I do like about Warlord games and Osprey games of the Bolt Action series is they make a really nice, cool hardcover book. And um, this is really nice. I mean, I almost hate to put the first edition on the shelf because it's just like this. It's just an awesome book. I guess the nice thing is I'm not replacing it with a poorer quality book. And then the only other thing is, many of you know that I play the Americans, and I'm finishing up some American tanks and some American models. But there's another army I always wanted to do, and now that I'm really kind of getting into this again, I'm setting my sights on doing a second army. And I guess 10 years later, getting back into it, I do plan on using my Americans to play initially, but painting projects, I'm going to do Germany. Now, um, I've been talking to folks, you know, that I know about about this um in particular um dan Boomin and rusty I've, I've mentioned this too um and i am not like uh, a huge historical buff you know um i do i did kind of get into the french indian war stuff a bit and i enjoyed that um but i don't know a lot of the differences between a lot of the different types of of um 
outfits within the German army. And so, like, you know, your, um, you know, whether it be what they refer to as, like, Blitzkrieg, I guess, is more of a slang term. I think it's not the most appropriate term. But w Warlords, Blitzkrieg, or, like, the early Germans, or whether it be the, the late Germans or the Waffen, like, all of this stuff. Um, some of the names I, don't even, I can't even pronounce, so I won't even pretend to, um, to say that, like, you know, to try to fake it. I'm not even going to fake it to make it. I'm just going to let you know right off the bat that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I got this so I could read up on it. I haven't even bought any German models. I just got this so I could read up on it. And I'm getting assistance from friends to help me when I do get to the point when I'm going to buy some models, um, what to do with that. Sorry if this is appearing kind of dark. I've been playing with my lighting in the in this new place, and it's, I've been struggling a little bit. So, picked up the the second edition um, Armies of Germany book, and I'm looking forward to just reading through this. And in some ways, because I still remember the rules a bit. You know, like I, I remember them a bit. I still think that there's. I'm definitely up to refresh. There's probably a lot that I think I know that I don't. And then I don't know any of the changes, but I, do, I think I'm gonna, for inspiration, I'm gonna actually start by reading this, and then I'm gonna go to reread the second edition or read the second edition. All right, that's new stuff that I'm doing. Um, I'm just gonna show you a couple things. I'm just trying this. Um, I'm just gonna zoom in and just show with my camera here. Um, uh, I'm just gonna show some close-ups. I just taped a bunch of stuff and I actually didn't hit the record button, which is funny, so I'm just gonna say this all over again. So this is uh, one of the figures that I did for the Mord Mordheim Marienburg. Um, he's sort of like the captain. Um, and yeah, like, I think the color is a little washed out with my lighting, but when I zoom in a bit, I think you can get the basic, basic gist. I think he came out okay. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. So that's one. And then the other one is this guy who's sort of like, he is sort of like, he's a ch listed as a champion. One of his legs is sort of like a peg leg, like the foot is actually off there. Um, this part right there and uh, he's a cool model if I zoom in kind of close so I spent a little bit of time on him I think he came out pretty decent so that's those two to add and then I was just gonna show the speed painting um, guys that I did I did five I did four this sort of lighter green color, this guy here, and then I did one in this darker green. The color, um, this is malignant green from Army Painter Speed Paints, and this one is two, is two parts malignant green and one part camo green. The camo green is really quite strong, it's a dark green, and so that's why it looks fairly different even though it's only one third. Um, what I'll do is just show these just real quick, quick, um, a little, show a little closer. Um, I did two coats for these guys. The other one with the camera green only did one. I really felt with just one coat with this guy, it looked very much like a pastel color. And whether you can see it on camera or not, um, as compared to what was before, they were so light before. This one looks definitely a lot richer. Um, when you see it with the naked eye at least. Um, and what I am planning on doing is I am planning on painting some metallics. Like I'm gonna paint the horns with regular paint and, and inks because I think that I can probably achieve a better effect pretty quick. Uh, I am gonna do on the armor shoulder panels here the trim in, in a metallic. Um, I'm gonna do the weapon head like of the ax in a metallic. And then after I do the um, the sort of just the trim and all of that, I think that's done. Like, I think it, I'm just gonna basically, I mean, I, I was considering maybe putting some quick shade, not, not quick shade, uh, just the quick shade ink, like, you know, the uh, watered down sort of um, soft tone. Uh, I was thinking about doing that. I don't wanna make these, even though they're Nurgle, 
I'm not going with the more modern, typical, like very, very grungy look. I am sort of going to keep them um, just a little bit more of like an older style paint job. Despite it being speed paints, like a brighter, older style paint job would be what I'm going to go for. Um, this one here is the one that has the mixture of the two. Um, and so, yeah, he's just a green. And I'll do the same. He's got actual boots there, and I used... I did use um, speed paints on that too. I used speed paints black on the handle. Um, so I'll do the horn, I'll do the metal trim on the armor. A um, little bit, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going nuts, but a little bit. I'm just gonna show one thing, is of the five, I did have a musician too, and his actual horn, I used the bone, and then I used an orange on this top of this dragon piece on the horn, and that's all speed paints too. And some of them were really quite nice. I mean, to just, to do stuff quickly and to just get a nice kind of look just with one application, because those were just one application. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's all about speed and getting large numbers of models in these cases on the table. These are just old plastics that I didn't want to spend a ton of time on. Um, I actually think it, it's, it's pretty good overall. So that's it for me. Um, I hope you guys are having a, a good week. I'm just going to cut back to the regular. I hope hand. you guys are having a good week and um, interested in uh, seeing what everybody else is working on. I've been watching more YouTube lately, and so I have been trying to, trying to comment on people's channels and things, um, and talk to you later.